being here with Severe Nature. Very humbled to be part of the 99 project. And I'll be telling you a bit about myself. Oh man, you know I had to do it for you. You know I had to do it for you. Yeah. Suits and ties yelling out. I've worked for Hype Beast. I've worked for Hip Hop Canada. I'm still currently I'm working for Hip Hop Canada. Uh, as a college reporter, I've worked for the Algonquin Times, Glue Magazine. I've freelanced for Metroland, and uh, I've interned as a junior war correspondent in Beirut in 2013. And today, I'm you know I'm at a very mi milestone point of my career, and I think this, you know there's no better time to be sitting here with an Ottawa brand that continues to push the envelope and talk about myself. That's actually, I know, I've always wanted somebody to ask me that, what kind of artist I am, because I never really felt I had the opportunity to really say it in person, or like on a personal level. Because, you know, a lot of people do perceive me, they think I'm a photographer, or, and they kind of, they, that's not really what I want to be known as. Actually, I don't want any label to kind of, be put under or be categorized by. I'm an artist by nature and I just so happen to be, you know, a journalist and photojournalist by trade. And actually I'm a photographer by mistake if you want to call it anything. You know, I, I picked up a DSLR by mistake because my school forced me to. And I mean, it just stuck with me that I've taken it this far. And actually another thing I wanted to say was, you know, when artists in the world, whether you're, you know, a painter, a musician or what have you try and kind of go past their boundary and try and do something else that's when you know they kind of get bashed for it. they kind of get bashed for it by society so yeah I'll keep it I'm, I'm, I'm an artist by nature and my trades are secondary <laughs> hashtag iPhone only it's exactly what it, like what it means I, I didn't start the trend like it's there's iPhone only, there's like Samsung as IGers and whatnot. It's basically iPhone only in its true technical form is a phone, is a picture that's never left your iPhone. It was taken on your iPhone, it was edited on your iPhone, and it was shared on your iPhone, whether it be through Tumblr, or in my case, Instagram. And like iPhone only and Instagram, like I think they really coincided. Like, you know, a lot of people, they don't take into account that, you know, social media is really like changing everything. You know what I mean? Like, like it's, it's, it's so crazy that you have people that, you know, find, they find their career, they find their path and they find like, they market on social media without ever leaving it. You know what I mean? But there's so many artists who, like, I, I know a couple artists I follow, like 13th Witness or Trash Hand, like. They travel the world. I mean, Apple sends them around the world just because they took pictures of their iPhone and put them on Instagram. And I really feel like that's really like one of the like the true the true like element and you know art beyond Instagram. And it, it, like I kind of find it annoying when you see people like reposting like caption pictures and Tumblr pictures and all that. And you know that's not what Instagram was originally for. I mean, like, no, hey, a lot of my friends do it, but iPhone only is basically saying like, hey, like, you know, look what I, what I can do with an iPhone without boasting or bragging. Now, like, imagine what I can do with a DSLR. Now, 95% of my pictures on Instagram are iPhone only. And I'll usually tell you that they're iPhone only. If they're not, like, I'll tell you exactly which camera. I'll say, oh, it was a Nikon D90 or a D5000. And I, I really think, you know, the whole iPhone only movement is like, it's a big community. It's like, it's like friendly competition, not like backhanded compliments or whatever, but it's kind of saying like, you know, pushing you, like you're pushing the limits, like, and you're like, at the same time, you're pushing me. Like, I want to do this. Or I want to do that. Like the only reason I'm doing iPhone only is because there's people before me who like continue to do it better than me. And you know, and when I like, I remember going up to them one day and I'm like, yo man, like you inspire me. Like, what do you do? And they're like, so like nobody ever told me what to do, you know what I mean? They gave me some apps, but they never really gave me the ingredients. And that's really matters. He's like, but all the only advice I can give you is whatever you're going to do, do it better than me. And that's honestly the best piece of advice. Like anyone can give no matter like 
what your hustle or what your art or you know what your what your dream or goal is and I got my my personal goal in life is to continue doing that until somebody comes up to me and says hey man like you inspire me and I'm going to turn around and say the exact same thing and be like listen you do you or what I do or whatever you do and do it better than me but until that day comes like you know no breaks no vacation so yeah uh hip hop canada was basically like my door you know what i mean it was the, my it was my way into the entertainment business and honestly like the people i work with you know, Natasha Paolini of the Central Region, Jesse Plunkett of Ottawa, one of the, the curators of Hip Hop Canada, like the entire publication, like, you know, I can't thank them enough for like what they've done for me and like what they continue to do for me. And it's one of the reasons why, like, no matter what, I'm never gonna leave Hip Hop Canada. You know, it's a family and it's Canadian and you know, it's, it's for the people. And, you can ask anyone in Canada about our credibility, even in New York, even in LA. We got offices there, and you won't hear a bad thing about Hip Hop Canada. And what I mean by my door into the industry is actually my first, my first entertainment story as as, a, as an entertainment writer. I was I was the uh, entertainment editor at the Algonquin Times, the Algonquin College newspaper. And someone came my way and said, "Hey man, like, do you want to cover Juno Week?" And I was like, "It's like, yeah, sure, whatever. It's just another assignment." I mean, I, I always had, I've always loved hip hop. I've always been a fan of hip hop, hip hop history, you know, its place in culture. But classified, I'm like, yeah, classified's playing. I'm like, yeah, it's been a minute. Like, I haven't heard of classified in a minute. You know what I mean? He's playing at Juno, he's playing in Ottawa. Can I interview him? That's what I want to know. I can write a story covering the show, that's boring. You know, anyone can go to a show and cover a show. You don't got to be upstage or side stage, you can just watch it essentially and cover it. And it was at that moment, you know, I remember, well, I didn't, I didn't have this technical term for it then, but later on in my career when I started working with Hype Beast and I met um, uh, the homie Dennis Tedisco, who was very, very decorated. He started off from Karma Loop, he made his way to Diamond Supply Co. And now he's the community lead for Nike out of Portland. He always told me one thing, he said, networking is your network. Your network is always your network. And that, you know, that attitude is, is so true in multimedia journal and in multimedia anything, especially with the social media boom. It's like it's all about who you know. You know what I mean? You can you can you have GPAs, like 4.0 GPAs and PhDs, but like if you don't know anybody, you're not getting anywhere. And basically even before that, I never had the term before that, and like I said, but you know, I, that was always my attitude. Like it was, I was the instinctual journalist. I knew what to do. You know, I'd go above and beyond. Now, Algonquin Times editor came out to me and said, "Hey, you know, you're, yeah, you're not interviewing classified. Like, you're not ready for that. You know, you're in first year journalism. You're you're a kid. I'm not gonna put you up with like Sony Music and Universal Canada, and have you sitting with some guy at the Arc Hotel in Ottawa. You know, face to face with the guy who's been on MTV, Much Music, talking to a dude who's probably on a second assignment." And essentially, like, you know, I get, I didn't obviously do it, but like, I pretty much gave him the bird, you know what I mean? Like, from behind his back, and I came back to him and slammed the story on the table with classified on it, talking. It's probably like 75% of the entire story was classified, and he said, you wrote this. I said, yeah, he's like, how'd you do it? And I wish I knew the term back then, but I wish I like, would have said, my network is my net worth. And that kind of attitude, has carried me throughout. And now with Hip Hop Canada, you know, it's the only reason, even at Hip Hop Canada, it's kind of like repetitive, like, and like, it's even what's been, what's helped me, you know, take the next step every time, every chance I could. Um, I mean, like, I'm not one to boast, but like, in four years, I've interviewed Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, Drake, sat down with Kanye West, even though it was a couple words, you know what I mean? Big Daddy Kane, Swollen Numbers, Master Ace, Most Def twice, um, Action Bronson twice, you know what I mean? And that's in four years, like before I even finished school. And I take that to editors and you're like, like man, like how do you do this? You know what I mean? Like what are you doing? And then it's basically like, it's just proving the editor wrong. You know what I mean? That's my cover letter. 
obviously as an artist of, you know, of uh, various fields and music wise, like I'd, I'd love to interview Jay-Z. I know it sounds, you know, cliche. And I know people are gonna say, oh, you know, that, that's like an Oprah gig or whatever. But no, Jay-Z as an artist is very, like probably the most introspective artist in hip hop. And it's safe to say like, he's the biggest artist in hip hop. Like he changed the game, you know what I mean? The Rock Nation, even before that, the Rock, the, you know, the Rock label, the artists he's put on, you know. If you, I bet you never heard of Kanye, you never heard of Memphis Bleak, any of those artists wasn't for Jay-Z. And he brought the business sides to hip hop. So it really shows, you know, many, many sides of an artist, you know, the entrepreneurship, um, the skill level, the consistency, and obviously the commitment. Because, you know, everything that guy says in the song, he essentially does. He bought the BK Nets, or the, the New Jersey Nets of Robin BK. Um, he signed Kevin Durant. Is it Durant or Garnett? I forget. And look what he's doing now, you know? He's he's going platinum off Samsung. Like you gotta tell me that you can't tell me that's not like innovative. And another artist would probably be Nor, because you know Noriega's been thrown under the radar a lot, but a lot of people don't understand how amazing of an artist he is, you know, especially even pre Pharrell days, like Noriega's been probably one of my top five favorite artists. Fashion wise, Ralph Lauren. Definitely, yeah, definitely Ralph Lauren. Um, Ralph Lauren, the brand, like, the name Ralph Lauren is, in my opinion, one of the, like, the best brand in the world. Um, it, it speaks to the American lifestyle, the American culture, more than anyone. I mean, no other brand can throw a polo on Obama and then throw, you know, a bucket hat on Smoke Diz or a Big Crit. You know, it's it's gone from like the hip hop culture with the low lifes and the Ralphie's kids to like very high class, you know, PGA tours or what have you. And they just, you know, like, if I could wear only one brand in the world, it'd probably be Ralph Lauren. Um, actually, I'm wearing like three pieces of Ralph Lauren right now. And they're not even all, you got the double RL. I guess it is, there's just the double RL going on. But, I'm not saying in terms of collaboration, I just like to work under the wing of like anything to do with Ralph Lauren because personally, like I can tell you so many stories where that brand has kind of defined what I've done in life or it's, you know, the stories it holds in my life. You know what I mean? I can pick up a pair of selfish denim and I can tell you, you know, I sat behind like an 85 SL Benz in Beirut wearing these jeans, dodging bolts, and I saw one hit my DSLR. And every time I pick up those jeans from my shop, I'm remi reminded of that story. And that's going to stick to me for the rest of my life.